There is a secret in Kendall County. It's a home like no other. And it has a rich history from its famous architect to its not so famous female owner, Elizabeth Matthews, tonight with the Edith Farnsworth House. A mid century modern Mecca, likely tucked away somewhere on the West Coast. It's just 60 miles from Chicago. Simple, clean design. This is buried in the woods in Kendall County. The glass house, one of the first in the world, was finished in 1951. And it was really just stripped down. It was the Marie Kondo of the day, you know, really nothing that was not essential. After 70 years, the structure has a new name, no longer the Farnsworth House, but rather the Edith. Farnsworth House. It's owned by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. It's a fundamental repositioning of Edith Farnsworth and how we understand, experience, and interpret this place. In the 1940s, Edith Farnsworth wanted a weekend country escape after growing up in the city and becoming a doctor. She uh, had her own research lab at Northwestern Hospital. Uh, it was the first to use hormonal treatment for the treatment of kidney disease. Her research would lead to the creation of the drug prednisone. Not married and no kids, Edith found a patch of land and began a collaboration with up-and-coming German architect Mies van der Rohe. It's straightforward in design, made out of steel, concrete, glass, and heated Italian travertine floors. Other than the bathrooms, it's essentially a one-room house. She really didn't want a lot of clutter in her life. And good thing, curator and executive director Scott Mahaffey says because everything in this house is on display. He advised Dr. Farnsworth to keep the furniture all neutral, uh, the interior colors, so that nature would always be the show. It's not perfect. The home sits in a floodplain and has flooded seven times in seven decades. Up until now, the history of the home has been focused on Mies van der Rohe, famed architect responsible for Chicago's Federal Center and one IBM Plaza, structures on the IIT campus, and apartment towers. Also in the headlines, the lawsuits between Edith and Mies over contracts. But Mahaffey says it was the doctor's confidence in the architect that helped his career tower over others. It's really become a pilgrimage site for architects and designers. About 11,000 visitors come to see the glass house every year, many of them from abroad. From the visitor center, the home is either a short walk or a golf cart ride away. Oh, this is so beautiful. Now the house isn't the only piece of art nestled in the woods. The National Trust also welcoming out artists to share their work. David Wallace Haskins created Image Continuous, named for one of Edith's poems, and like the house, celebrates nature and effortless design. Mahaffey says patron of the arts, Edith, would be slightly embarrassed, but in awe of all the attention. She really did have a role in changing the course of American architecture. Elizabeth Matthews, Fox 32, Chicago.